In the last video, I showed you how to create these wavy, glitchy text effects using dithering and some After Effects and Photoshop tricks. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the animated version of these effects beyond what I covered in the first video to the next level and just make them look cooler and show you some extra stuff you can do to get more out of your animations in Ditherboy. Wanted to do this in two parts just because I covered the setup of the effect in the last video, which I actually only recorded yesterday. So yesterday I covered all that stuff. And now in this video, I'm not going to go through the entire process. I can just focus on some of the more like advanced parts of this or some of the more like time consuming parts for the tutorial so before watching this one i really recommend going and watching the last video on the channel which i will show the details for on screen and i will leave it linked below the video as well so for this video i'm gonna start in photoshop and i'm then gonna move into after effects and then dither boy and then probably back into after effects again so yeah it is a little bit complicated so you need to have watched the first video to kind of catch up here but i've got photoshop open already obviously and for this video i'm going to go for something a little bit more sensible text wise and i'm just going to quickly make sure i've got the black background inverted to white and i've got my black text so let me try and fit something in here that i could actually when i've rendered it out put it on a poster or use it on the website so i'm going to just write dither boy is a one-time purchase software with free updates and i am just going to stretch it a little bit too because i don't care about typography anyway so that's centered and same as i did in the last video i'm just going to go in something nice and boring and then i'm going to bevel and emboss and tone that down quite a lot like that and then gradient overlay let's go radial yeah i'm going to do radial and then another gradient overlay that i'll do linear like a bit of an angle on it turn down the opacity and then change some of the blend modes on these just so that it's not flat and boring and you already watched the last video so you know why we do that and i'm going to save this now and then i'm going to move into after effects so i've already got this open here and imported so this is where now i can start showing you the more interesting stuff so you can get some more interesting outputs from the process that i showed you last time so before i just basically said do a little gradient do a little bevel and emboss do a little inner glow turbulent noise and it'll spit out something that just moves which is cool but just moving is not really like you're not really taking full advantage so if you right click go new solid make a black solid layer and then make a new adjustment layer on top of that go to effects and presets and if you can't see that just go to window and make sure effects and presets is ticked and then just type in snow and you will We'll be able to drag in the simulation effect for snowfall and you might not see anything to start with but if you zoom in you'll see that there are some little particles there now and if we lower the speed down they stop being like streaks and they turn more into little orbs lower the variation in speed as well if you go to background illumination and turn the influence to zero and turn the opacity up to 100 that helps with visibility too I'm going to turn the size up and I'm going to turn the wiggle down until it starts looking quite static. So if you remember, when we apply the waves to the text, the waves will come down the y-axis. So this snow moving down the y-axis will create subtle like movement along that axis in the dither. But if I just re-enable the black solid so I can see what's going on, if I then go and turn the wind up, if you do it with the slider, it'll only go to 50. But if you just crank it, it can go way beyond 50. Probably would turn the flake count down as well. So now you've got these like crazy, like warp speed, snow sort of effects here, like, like something from No Man's Sky or whatever. And now if you hold shift with the black solid selected and then click on the adjustment layer, right click, click on pre-compose, then click OK. And then come back into effects and presets and just go to glow, drag a glow onto the pre-comp and up the radius and the threshold and stuff. And you can start making that look a little bit prettier. And then because that's all tied together now, you can change the blend mode to not difference because that's way too crazy. Something like overlay or lighten, depending on like what you're looking for here. 
obviously if you just save this after effects project after this tutorial then you can come back and like fine tune these little choices i'm gonna go for yeah i'm just gonna go for overlay because i had to look through and they're a bit intense for what i'm gonna go for here but this will create some movement because we've not kept it just on the y-axis now these are moving near horizontally there'll be movement through the waves now one mistake i've probably made here is if i go back into the pre-comp i think speed is a little bit too high so if i just go for like five speed here uh, that still does look quite fast because the wind is set so high so maybe i'll lower that down a little bit to be something like this maybe you could reintroduce the wiggle too if you wanted some like chaos in there but i'm gonna keep the wiggle to a minimum of course all of these like if you just hold all click if you're not sure about whether you want something to be static you can always just use a wiggle expression the best expression ever so wiggle 100 and now you can see that my snow my particles the wiggle is being wiggled so the intensity of the wiggle is now wiggling as well yeah hopefully that makes sense next if you do another new adjustment layer you can do the old old reliable turbulent noise Again, setting to like overlay or maybe because I already used overlay, I can go for lighten and just turn the opacity down quite a lot and turn up the contrast. And then again, add a wiggle to the evolution. So wiggle, I'm just going to go 1, 180 for this one. So it's not anything too mental. And I'm probably going to lower the opacity again here just so it's a little bit more subtle something else you can do here is if you right click go new solid but this time if we go for a white solid and put that above everything then again go new adjustment layer and we're going to do snow again and then change the color to black opacity to 100 background illumination to zero and change the transfer mode to composite now you get the black snow fall through so i'm going to turn the flakes all the way down on this one size all the way up variation variation in size all the way down speed all the way down something super super slow no variation in speed no spread no wiggle so just really normal boring floating orbs and then pre-comp those as well the same way we did before i'm not naming my layers here but you probably should and then just change the blend mode to divide they'll come through now on your text as well and if you wanted to you could go back in here actually and we can go even bigger on the size oh it looks like it's capped at 15 maybe if i just type in like 30 no okay well that's very boring that you can't go bigger so I, instead of going bigger i'm just gonna add more and in fact no i won't add more because i'll just exit the free comp and i will just scale the free comp up in the properties tab because the blend in here means that it doesn't matter that we're missing out on some orbs in fact you could even duplicate that and do multiple like scale variants here all using the same blending so point is this looks rubbish like this looks awful but hopefully when we did this well not hopefully but when we did this and apply the same settings and the same methods that we did in part one there's multiple new like influences influences there's multiple new factors here that are influencing the luminosity of what you've got basically what you've set up so the ideal outcome therefore is that it is far less boring and rather than just being text that has a dither that moves on it you will be able to see things moving through the dither this time so i'm just exporting mine now i'm just going to go for match source high bit rate and i'm just gonna hope it doesn't crash my recording and while that's just exporting in the same after effects document i'm just gonna hide all of these because i'll be bringing the dithered asset back here to work on as well so i'm gonna open up dither boy file video import video import video and just load up my new text so again i'm not going to cover this in as much detail i'm not going to do as many like iterations here in the recording but if you remember last time i went for waveform alternative and i upped the modulation blend so i'll do one export of this and just after this exports i'm probably gonna export another one from after effects that doesn't have the turbulent noise 
because I don't like this like cow patchy effect, even though it might look cool in the final version that we go and invert and add glow to and stuff. I'm not a fan. So I deliberately turned down the opacity twice on the turbulent noise and used a different blend mode to last time. I didn't go for overlay on turbulent noise to try and avoid the cow patchy effect, but obviously I didn't go far enough. So once that's exported, yeah, I might, I might go back and just change that. Okay. That one's done. Before I try out the version without any turbulent noise, I did say in the last video, it's always good to just look at what you're doing with error diffusion as well. So yeah, I'm just going to have a look at how this looks in Floyd Steinberg 2 and I actually might take one of these out as well because this does look quite cool. I think I'm going to try out the Ostronokov dealer because I really like this one lately. Anyway, I will, um, obviously I'll show you all the ones that I do at the end. This one, very cool, modulated diffuse Y, lower the midtones a little bit so that the background lines are quite boring and still and then that contrasts with these sort of stenciled out sections where the lines are quite chaotic so before i change my turbulent noise i'm also just going to export this version too and i actually might just up the blur a little bit just to make them a little bit smoother but yeah i'm going to export this one okay now that's done let me go back into after effects re-enable these that i disabled because i look how this the Look how subtle this turbulent noise is for how much it comes through. That's kind of annoying. Just get rid of it. And let me double up on these particles a little bit. Just go like stupid levels. Going to have to change from divide on the other ones to not lighten. Yeah, I'm just going to go overlay. So now the orbs that are coming down are only going to be visible when they pass through a particle that's going along the y-axis. So I don't know. I'm just trying to experiment here, really. This is the stuff that I can't really do when I have to explain it from scratch. So I'm going to try this one on waveform. Now I've got that one in here in Dizaboy. So waveform, high density. Let me reset all these other settings I messed with. And I'm just going to go for something really low density for this one just again because it doesn't really matter that much what i do here i'm more just trying to communicate like how adding some moving elements to the luminance can really just like level up the animation that you get out of this okay so i'm going to export this one as well okay so to make sure i'm not spending the majority of my time here today just looking at export screens i'm back in after effects and i'm going to just start bringing these in so i did do a few more but i'm mainly just going to focus on these ones so so we've got waveform with the patchy turbulent noise. We've got the modulated diffusion dither with the patchy noise. And then I've got a really, really low density one where I removed the turbulent noise. So same as before, we're just going to be stacking some glow on this until it looks pretty and then calling it a day, really. So you can go regular glow. And I always tell people to do it in this order. But basically, you just want to stack these in a way where they don't immediately become overpowering. So you can go like high radius, high high threshold, low intensity for the first one. And then you can start lowering the threshold and up in those other values as you go. Or you can obviously just do it with the Gaussian blur method where you're just stacking Gaussian blurs and there are various glow plugins that you can invest in for After Effects as well. Like this one named Deep Glow. Other plugins are available. And then I just got to remember as well to invert some of these, the ones that need inverting. So I think it's just this one, the wave one. And what I'll do just to make sure that you can actually see the result here. I don't want to start playing and, and skipping around these too much in my recording because in the past I have lost footage because of After Effects crashing and just being annoying. I will just show you with this one. So if you zoom in and move around, you can see the particles are coming through our dither here. And that will be true of the other two. But again, I just want to show it in this one because this is the most obvious one. And I will export the others and just show you them in the video rather than in the screen recording. So yeah, I mean, the methods that I showed there, like with adding the snowfall to get these particles moving through the dither, along the opposite axis to the axis that we are dithering on. So if you're dithering on the Y axis, then you want movement along the X axis and vice versa. These really apply to any other dithering that you're doing. Doesn't have to be on text. Doesn't have to be this exact setup. Doesn't have to be glowing or you can use depth and introduce like color. We added color obviously and I've not used it at all in this video in Ditherboy. These are just like 
principles that will help you and, and like serve you in like working with dithering wherever you do it whatever the effect is just movement through the pixels and the dithering patterns and stuff is what makes like makes this look cool in my opinion anyway so hopefully this was cool been a while since i've done a video with two parts but hopefully you learn something and you get the point that I was trying to make here. It's not necessarily about this end product or it's not necessarily about the thing I made in this video. It's more just about making sure people understand that like this is the right way to make your simple dithering look interesting and, and give it motion and stuff beyond just, oh, it moved a little bit. So as always, thanks for supporting Dither Boy. Still got Dither Boy updates in the works. Still got more tutorials coming for Dither Boy. Please let me know if you see me do any work with Dithering that you would like me to cover in a tutorial because I want to make sure I cover everything that you, that you want to see with Dither Boy. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.